countdown and we're live hey this is federal prison talk my name is sean if you haven't watched the channel i've done time in federal prison and i've been out about four years i did 52 months for wire fraud and uh this show is all about changing your life before prison during prison after prison and if you're not going to go to prison um what are you watching for no if you're not going to go to prison you could definitely learn what we're really like people who do go to prison we don't all look like gangsters on the corner uh, hanging out at three in the morning. <laughs> and uh, I have a guest here that doesn't look like that either. This is Rose. And uh, we're going to talk about her life, how she turned it around, because I know she has. And uh, we're here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Rose, you want to say hello? Tell people who you are, what you, what you do, what you're about? So first of all, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to, to be here and, and share what's happened in my life. And hopefully it will inspire someone. Um, so I guess, um, I guess I'm going to start sort of, you know, at the beginning, so to speak, I had, um, I had over 20 years of, of meth addiction that led me into a, a lifestyle that had a lot to go with it. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of people watching this channel can relate. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I was involved in prostitution and, and, um, a bunch of other stuff, you know, theft. I went to in and out of jail all the time for um, just different things, domestic violence, theft. Um, uh, you know, I mean, just jail a bunch. Is worse, of jail is worse than prison, if you ask me. Well, I was in and out, and I just I couldn't um, I couldn't stay out of jail. Really, just kept going so many times, and so much had happened where you know you you're on addiction so much and everything spirals together with whatever you do whatever it takes to get the drugs you know I was making it and and um and just making meth and so it was oh, you were you were you were a cook too huh well Chef my husband boy. yeah my my then boyfriend was a cook <laughs> and, and so, that's when they called it crank i guess back in those days there's something something before that maybe yeah that was before that but i i did uh you know took a lot Anybody that's ever done that before knows how much work goes into just, you know, making a bag <laughs> is a lot of work, a lot of hours of work. But anyway, so yeah. I was. Huh? But they can't hold, but they can't hold a regular job. I, I get it. Yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's twice as much work making that stuff, but I, I'm not thinking. <laughs> it was my full-time job. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's basically all every dollar that I had, you know, every dollar that I didn't have every minute that I had and every minute that I that escaped me, every uh, relationship that I was in and the relationships that I had been cut off from because of it, everything was because of it, you know? And right. um, the crimes that I was involved in. I was a crackhead back when you were doing that and I made the switch. So I, I get it. I understand. Yeah. So when I go down the the line for everything that I was doing, I think it was based on 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 my use but anyway it, it, taking a hold of my mind and uh i started to hear voices in my head and and the paranoia just got to be too great and i had physical illness along with it so i was um is, is it okay if i mention god on here or no well you can mention anything you want to, i don't care if you mention allah or uh isis or anything you want to talk about any god of your choice it's uh, it's my channel, but there's a few things YouTube has rules on, but I doubt you'll come even close to those. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, so I started to like think my life was gonna end. You know, felt like a shadow closing in on me in darkness, like something bad was about to happen or something. So the more ill that I got, and um, I I began to start reading my Bible and everything, and and it was telling me I'd read different stuff like, you know sell sell what you have and come and follow me that's what that's what jesus would tell his disciples and stuff so stuff like that i would read it and i, I remember putting everything i had in a in a yard sale and i was it was like six o'clock in the morning i'd been up for days you know <laughs> and my yeah. drug dealer boyfriend sees me putting stuff in the yard and he's like what are you doing and i'm like i'm gonna get rid of everything i have and go follow jesus and he's like after you after you spend that money right yeah <laughs> yeah I, yeah after i mean i had i was high than the kite when i was saying this but but i had yeah, gotten I, so so to the point where i really thought that i would give god a chance because there's no other way to do this you know i was like i need to get out of my drug playground i'd heard that so much and then i finally said okay maybe that's what i need to do is just get out of here you know so 
I, I put everything in the yard sale, like in a yard sale start. I don't have any. How many, how many days did it take you to, to take that stuff out of a box? Just kidding. I know. <laughs> that's exactly my point. My boyfriend comes out. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, you don't even have enough. I go, I'm taking, I'm getting out of here. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to leave town, go start a new life and all this and that. And he's like, you know, he saw me. He's like, you're serious, aren't you? And I was like, yes, I am. He says, okay, put all this stuff back in the house. I'll send you on a one-way ticket to, to Albuquerque. So I said, really? Okay. So I called my daughter and said, would you, you oh, know, that's you got here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was in El Paso. Yeah. And so that was oh. my drug playground. When I called my daughter, she says, um, I said, I'm going to take off, you know, I'm going to go start a better life. She says, um, yeah, he's like, is that okay with you? And she's like, mom, I don't, I don't have my mom anyway. And yeah, I was like, oh. like I, I'm like, it's going to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, so that yeah. hurt. That hurt really we, bad. I mean, we hurt those loved ones. We don't realize it till after we can look back at it. You know, we yeah. really. Oh man, I mean, they've they've written us off so many times. Yeah. I know. Well, my family I can't speak about yours. But. <laughs> no, it was true, and it hurt me bad. I hadn't realized it. You know, I thought I was trying hard, and she didn't know or stuff like that. And uh, she knew. Hey, so, I just want to give a shout out here to Chicho uh, Blog. He's got thirty nine. He got thirty nine months. That he has to go do the time. He's going to surrender November 1st. Hey, man, you know my number's underneath all the videos or something. Let, let's talk and kind of get you prepared for that. But uh, just uh, awesome. thank you for watching. Subscribe. Hit the like button. But, Rose, I get a lot of people like this on pretrial waiting yeah. to go to prison one day. You know? It, you never know. It, it November 1st, right around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, no problem. But anyway, um, so I came downtown, down to Albuquerque and... And the reason why I really want to share this is because, see, a lot of people will get out of jail, they'll, they'll get out of prison, and they they need to start in a new, they'll end up like in a new town. They'll Sometimes you'll get released oh, to a new place. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. People do that on purpose sometimes, too. I mean, they forget who brought, who, who they come with. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about? They're selves, yeah. right? <laughs> right, exactly. Well, what's crazy is that, you know, so you get in a new town and is it going to, you know, you end up, you're leaving your old drug playground. If you've been in prison for a long time or jail for a long time, depending on how long you've been out of the, you know, out of the public and stuff. And you come back and you're like, you don't know anybody or you have to start fresh. But there's that old crowd waiting for you. You know, your old, old drug playground that you want to catch up with and stuff. And so that's why I know I really wanted to share what I have to say, because I know I, I'm hoping that a lot of people can relate to this. So I know you have a lot, you have a lot to say. So I, I hope you get a chance to say it all. Yeah. How much time do I got anyway? As much as you want. I, I, I got an hour anyways, but if you want to wrap it in, you want to go overboard, you want to go under, it's, it's, oh, it's, no, up, to you. Yeah. it's up to you. Uh, you make the call. We women like to talk a lot, you know, so. <laughs> and, that's, and that's when you're sober and when you're drug free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, I, I came here. So I here I was on a one-way ticket to Albuquerque. And um, I became homeless here. I was at the Greyhound downtown, okay? I got kicked out of the Greyhound after a week and had about had three pieces of luggage, you know? You, you didn't make it over to the war zone. You stayed on that side of town, the downtown stayed, part? Yeah. That's a whole other uh, culture, right? Yeah, it From is. The war zone? Yeah, it is. Well, I mean, that's where I stayed that's where I ended up at. Cause that's where they dropped me in from the Greyhound. And I didn't know anybody here, you know, so I just, well, I had some family members here, but they lost contact with me and I, I didn't, they didn't talk to me and all that. Yeah. So and um, I already know, I already know how the story goes. The guy that was going to save you and fell in love with and had yeah. you work. And I are, I, but if you want to tell it, you can, I, I've, I've seen it a hundred times personally. But yeah. But what's, here have no clue what I'm talking about when you get off that Greyhound bus. Yeah. So, so what was what was cool about it um, was that I you know was I became homeless basically here in Albuquerque. What's cool about it is that everybody that I ran into in this town where I didn't know nobody knew me. Um, I didn't have like my drug playground here. I had two choices. I could either start hooking up with people and you know get yeah. start using again whatever. But but um, I knew that God was the one who was going to help me do this. I, that was what I was sure about because I'd read a lot of the scriptures and this was like my only chance. I was like, the only chance I could do this is you. So I'd give it a try, you know. And so what I did was I'd run into people at the bus stops and stuff. And I would tell them right away upon meeting them that I'm I'm not using, you know, I'm here. I'm drug free. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to get I'm getting my life right. That's what I'm here for. And, and they how, how are they reacting? Oh boy, Sean, they'd, they'd give me a, they'd right away. I mean, many of them, 
you'd be surprised they bring out a bowl. They tempt oh, you. Yeah. I, you're touching something they wanted, they want themselves, but they're not. I, I, I mean, it's a whole. I could imagine what you steer up when you say that to people yeah. out there. You know. Yeah, they they felt like I was judging them or something, and right away they they break out a big old massive bowl and something like that. Sure, because you're you're not going to be better than that. Don and I am. We're both homeless. Come on, here, hey, take this, hit, hit this. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. But the thing is, because I had told them that God was the one that was helping me, it kind of made me feel accountable to that once I told them it. Okay. So I'd say it right as soon as I met people. It, I was basically fighting my own. That, that was your protection then. That was that protected you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I decided to do every time I'd, you know, run into somebody and whether it was at the bus stop and, you know, invited somewhere, I would be like, you know, this is the deal as soon as I met someone. And it worked. I mean, Days turned into weeks and into months, and the more sober I became, the more I was able to function. You know. And, and you did this on the streets. Were you sleeping? Where were you sleeping at night? Did you, did you so, have a tent, a cardboard box, a shelter? What? So, for I, I was sleeping in yards and stuff like that, and and on the street until I found a paint and body shop. Um, so, my mom was uh, knew some an older man over here that had a paint and body shop. So you said your mom knew your mom knew a man. Yeah, that was, yeah. She, my mom called me up. Well, I talked to her, whatever. So you had a phone. You were homeless with a phone. That's that's. Yeah, when I left El Paso, I still had a phone. So because I just you were, most people they can't hold one for four days tops. I think until they sell it or. But you're sober. You, I'm just saying it re brings back so many memories. I, I'm sorry. Keep going. Yeah, no, for real. But I but see when I was homeless in El Paso, it was different. I was using then, but now I was trying to stay sober. So that's one thing that's really weird because a lot of times we think we see people on the street and we think automatically that they're on that they're high and stuff. But this, in this case, I was running from my drug playground all the way to another state, and that's why I was here to be homeless was to run. From the they're drug. not necessarily high. I was homeless in San Francisco, and you know maybe eighty percent of them are, but that twenty percent is a lot of people in San Francisco that are not. They're trying to get out of that. I get it. Get I get it. Yeah. Yep. For sure. So I was, I found a paint and body shop and I was, I was living in there while they worked during the daytime. I would go down the street to the, you know, to the shelter and stuff like that. But at night I had a place to sleep. So I'd go get masks from the, from the homeless shelter. And, and that was before COVID. Okay. And I was, oh, oh, you were one of those. I've seen, I've really heard about you people before COVID happened. <laughs> yeah. well, <laughs> but I would use the masks because there's pigeons pooping on me. In oh, the okay in the bathroom it was like a really filthy place but that's where i that's where i found to to live out in that bathroom you have to learn to talk pigeon language and they'll be your friends and it, it's a whole nother thing yeah <laughs> but that's what i you know i was just glad to be away where nobody could you know hurt me or nothing so i was just yeah. kicking oh, there and, a woman any any i don't care if it was the 60s or 1930s or the 19 you know 2021 women out there homeless alone it's yeah. Not a, uh, not a, you know, I mean, I'm yeah. glad I'm, I'm glad I wasn't a woman homeless. I was a man homeless and that's scary enough. Yeah. You know? Well, I did get raped at a shelter that was in El Paso though. But anyway, really? Um, so yeah, I was, by, let me guess by a staff member. Well, no, it was because a staff member knew that I, what was happening and they didn't, they didn't, uh, Oh, it's good, good, thing the guy, good thing we have people like that run, running our shelters. I know. I, I, I hate to be sarcastic, but this is the world we live in today. Yeah. That's the stuff that just, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, and you're doing what you're doing. If you get into it, you can tell them what we, how we met. Yeah. We're all, we're getting certified to be uh, felons with a what? Yeah. With peer support. Be, yeah. Yeah. We're doing peer support now. Well, so what happened when I got off the streets, uh, when I got clean, so my boyfriend that was living in El Paso at the time, remember I still have my phone, right? So he'd called me up. He said, uh, you know, how are you doing and all that? And and he, I said, I'm clean. You know, I'm still doing good. And he couldn't believe it. I was happier than and more <laughs> functional than I'd ever been. And so he said, you know what? He I said, you know, he's like, can you come and visit me? Uh, he, can I go visit you? And I said, no, because I don't want to. I don't want to get high. I don't want to mess up. You know. Oh, he, he's 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 out there using still. Yeah, he was out there using still, but he bowed his head and and, and prayed. You know, when he was in his um, in the middle of a, a, a batch that he was making meth, and he said, God, if you can do it for her, you can do it for me. 
And so he got his life clean. And a couple of months later, he calls me up and he says, can I go visit you now? I said, yeah. Well, when he came down, he saw that God was what God had done in my life. He couldn't believe it. And he was a 30 year meth addict. And, you know, Ooh, I mean, you're yeah. just going back to the beatnik days of the 50s. If anybody knows a beatnik is, uh, put it on there. Yeah. I'm giving away my age. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So we ended up getting married and my daughter came to visit, you know, and she, she couldn't believe she had her mama back. And and so so she moved down here and then. Um, and then we started a church. We started a ministry called Heaven's Door. And uh, that's why your email says that. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Go ahead and plug that church. Anything you want to talk about, it's all right. You, you have my blessing. So, well, Heaven's Door is a, like a recovery and just a community church, community ministry that uh, I don't even like to say it's a church because one thing, um, we don't we don't like that churchy thing, you know? Good. And I don't like it either. <laughs> we're just ourselves and, you know. And a lot of people are uh, out of prison, out of a uh, um, recover or in recovery still, or out of recovery. You know, th we're just a group of people that just want to give life a try with God. You know, and and uh, real people, real real stories all come together. And so the other thing is, I got a job at, at uh, Christian Counseling Professionals, is where I work at now. Oh, and, do, you, do, you work, do you work? Do you work with Leroy Lucero? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's one yeah, time he's my, yeah. He's my man. Yeah. He's my, he's a good dude. I, yeah. He's been on this show before. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. So I love working for them. I'm a community support worker and that's how I met you with, uh, yeah, with the, right. not through Christian counseling, but through the Oprah training. Yeah. 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 So we do peer support and all that. Yeah, so guys, peer support. It's kind of like a social worker, but, but you've been to jail or homeless or prison or you've had some kind of traumatic uh, part of your life where you were, I'll say I was a, they used to call me the weasel. Everybody would run away. Now they don't <laughs> run away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And but I worked for that. I worked hard for that. And she's worked hard for that, guys. Uh so and then you can help people and yeah. So we help people off. coming out of jail that come out of that they're gonna get out and everything and they need to get like stuff going again, getting an ID, getting a job, getting training, getting a GD, whatever, yeah. housing. And, and, you know, they bill Medicaid and I think every every 15 minutes we spend with somebody, they they bill them for ninety dollars. So we're we're actually worth something, man. Right? <laughs> yeah, yo. Who the thought yeah. this crackhead shit? Ninety bucks for every fifty minutes I talk to you? Wow. <laughs> and then it's weird because my my testimony about what happened in my life and all that has actually helped is become my resume now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I can be proud. I've been homeless. I've been in jail eleven times, guys. Federal prison. And homeless. I, I don't know three. I lost count after three times. Yeah. And you know, I I use that as a positive. You know, and then I, I got through all that, man. You know, I'm the guy you want to hire. Forget those guys out in the lobby, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I've been in jail. Like, how many times were you in jail? Don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> I only knew because when I went to prison, they said, how many times have you been in jail? He had my paper. I go, I don't know, five or six, maybe I, maybe six. He goes, 11. I was just wondering if you even knew. <laughs> right? Maybe more than a dozen. Try it. <laughs> But um, I want to share something about my son because my yeah. son. Um, oh, right. that's right. Yeah. So he um, he's doing time and he's going to be in there for a long time. But um, I was able to to spend some time with him before he went in when I got to Albuquerque after I finally got really cleaned up and sober and stuff. He, how how I, many months did he get? I know feds use months as why. He my my son. Your son, yeah. He's going to do fifteen years. 15 years. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, once like after 10, they do, they stay, stay with the years. But wow. Is he going to a penitentiary, to a medium, to load, you know, a camp, you know, any um, of that? Um, I'm not sure yet. It's just kind of fresh still. So, Hey, if you, if you can have him give me a call, cause that's what I do. I mean, I, I got all okay. these things on the wall here, but I mean, uh, yeah, I, I can help him. I, I, I answer a lot of questions and make the guy, have him give me a call, please. please Absolutely. Please. Tell, I tell will. It'll be beneficial to him. I will. Katie, Katie down here will tell you. Right, Katie? Katie's going through it right now. She's got a big case. <laughs> and there's so many people, like I've been checking out your show and everything, and so many people that are needing that, someone to connect with, somebody that can they can relate to, someone that's been there, you know. Um, and what have yeah, you. Know, I can't even tell you what the bath, how, do you, how do you use the bathroom in a prison, you know? Yeah, and there's there's a whole like, etiquette about that, you know. The real, yeah. I did a show on it. I mean, yeah, but I do want to encourage people that if they end up in a 
in a state or, you know, a place where a town that they're not from, you know, that they have to leave all their drug playground behind and everything, you can start fresh. You can do a new start. You can make it happen as long as you set your mind to it and you say, this is what I'm going to do. And for me, it was God that helped me through my spiritual like my spiritual faith and everything that helped me through, that was the only way I could do it. But, you know, the thing is, there is, there is hope, you know, it took me, let's see, for 25 years worth of my life messed up, you know, uh, it took me a couple of years and of just plugging away at it and staying, but you have to remove yourself from your playground. You have to get away from the people, you know, change that environment. Yeah. yeah you kind of have to, man. I mean, I'm not going to go to a crack house and, you know, detox. Okay. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Is it? So there was, there was so much prostitution in my life and stuff like that. And so much theft. I mean, so many things I didn't get caught for, you know, type thing. You know, I'm, I'm from San Francisco and I just been in Albuquerque a year and a half. So I have a lot of straight friend, male, male friends that uh, were out there selling themselves to gay men to get that next hit of crack or, or meth or whatever it was, you know. Uh, so I understand. And I, 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 I actually considered it one night. And uh, thank God, thank God that I didn't have to go through that part. But I do know that world you live in very well. Yeah. And, and you know what? There is a purpose. There is a purpose for each of us, you know, and we may, even though our life goes in a different direction and God has made us for something in mind, he has something in mind for us. And, and he already knows here. He looks at us and sees who we were meant to be. And so I know that, that realizing that, that I was somebody that was worth something. Um, we were definitely me, worth something. And it, yeah. it, it it took me reading the Bible that now, you know, that I know, you know that now, but when did, when did that click in your head that you're actually worth something even, even that much? Cause that, we start off thinking where well, there's no way I'm worth anything. When do you remember when that turning point, that, that little spark, something that miracle, that tiny miracle happened in your head? Yeah, I do. I was, um, I was, it was when I was reading, it was when I opened the book, opened the Bible and I was in a hotel room. And there had one of those, you know, Gideon Bibles that are in the drawer and all that. And I was oh, there. Oh, I was, six the Gideons. I've never met one. I don't know if they're real people or Gideons. You know, yeah. yeah. But I was in a prostitution ring at the time, and I was higher than a kite, and I've been, you know, hallucinating and all that, and and I was getting in trouble with the pimps and stuff or whatever you want to call. It. <laughs> they didn't call them like that anymore. You know, every decade they have a new name for those ass for those. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I I um. I, I pulled out that Bible that was in that drawer and I started reading it. And that's when I remember I started to, it was hard to believe it. It took me a long time to really believe that I, that it was talking to me and it was for me when I started to realize that, that that's why, um, I don't know if I can say the word Jesus, but that's Jesus. Please, it's, it's, just, any, it's why any, it's okay. If you want to say it, I give you my permission. And you too, okay. uh, I don't think they have a problem with Jesus either. Well, you know, um, the when I realized that he's that he died for a reason was so that I could get a hold of God, so that I could be okay with God. Then I said, you know what? I don't care anymore. I'm gonna. And I had my drug pipe and I had my Bible with me, but at the same time, I just started reading. I mean, you had one in each hand. I've never done that. What's that? Like? I literally did. I did. I had. I had both, and I did both, and I was reading through that. Were you holding the Bible and the pipe or at the same time? I, mean, I would. I would. I was doing that before I was too afraid. I was wow. too afraid to mess with God at all because of my drugs. But at this point, I was like, you know, if I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to go to hell worshiping God. So let me just do it, you know. And I started to read. And the more I read, the more I was able to put it down, put down that, that pipe. And it just started happening more and more and more. I started to say, wow, this is really cool. So hope started that way, you know. Yeah. And uh, Hey, I used to go to this bar. Uh, I've been in and out of AA, and one time I was out of AA, and there's a bar where they had big books in the back, and we had these fake mock AA meetings while we were drinking. So yeah, I, we didn't <laughs> yeah. mock Jesus, we didn't mock the Bible, but you didn't know, just kidding. But uh, you know, it, it's it's a uh, man, it's what it does to your head. I mean, I, I, nobody nobody would go. I, I've never seen anybody like completely sober and you know back to normal, back to reality. 
do anything like that. So maybe along the way, we just, you know, we're still, you know, we're still working out those brain cells coming back and all that stuff and trying to believe in ourselves, let alone, you know, something else and, you know, and help somebody else. That was, that's a new concept for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love it today. I love it today. I live for it today, but that's, that was a new concept, man. What do you mean? Yeah. Help you, but I don't get nothing out of it. <laughs> I know. Right. No, everything's turned around and it's like so much freedom now. Feels so much better to have a life. <laughs> I see somebody wrote in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's cool. Oh, did it? Did it? Uh, oh, you know, yeah, right. I, yeah. I was kind of, <laughs> kind of laughing at myself because I was kind of like faking it when I asked if it was okay that I say it. I'm laughing to myself because I'm thinking, of course it's okay. <laughs> if you had to ask for, uh, for, for one, if I told you no, I would, I, if I were you, you I said would, no, okay. I would have said, I can leave my number. I, 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 I mean, really? <laughs> Yeah, there's no way I can I cannot mention Jesus because you know he's the one that did it for me for sure. Yeah. There, there, there was one time I was in the backyard, right, and I was in El Paso, and my boyfriend he tells me, "What are you doing out here?" And I, and I go, "I'm praying." He's like, "What?" He's like, "Can I pray too?" And we were both high, you know. I was, he's like, "Can I pray too?" And I go, "That's like oh, being high and praying." I, I love it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I told him though? What? I told him, "Get your own Jesus." Ah! <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I didn't want to enjoy it. my private time. But. I know what you meant by that, though. I mean, this is my thing. I found my way out, man. And it, it this is mine. Get your own. I, I, I understand it. That's all. <laughs> I really do. Get your yeah. own shopping cart, man. It's mine, man. It took me like a month to find this. You know? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this all I can. This is the only hope I have. Just get your own Jesus. But, you know, there's this song. I forgot who sings it. It's a Christian song, but it's called um, My Jesus. I felt like when it came out on the radio, I was like, this is our song. Look. And he got his own Jesus too. He did. So yeah. See, I mean, there's a uh, everywhere and at the same place, but nowhere, nowhere you can see him. I, how does that, how's that saying go? But God is everywhere. But you, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Yeah, every, yeah. What? The more that I had faith in him, the more the more I realized just how real he is. And uh, there was no better high than 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 what he's done for me. No better high than walking with him and. And knowing him for sure you know when i went to prison uh they had maybe i don't know 18 different types of religions everything from mormons to wiccan to thor the thunder god to uh there was uh muslims there was uh so i read the torah i read the quran i read the bible and i the the the, the Quran. i mean the, the the quran really uh impressed me it doesn't talk bad about any other religion if you ever get a chance in an open mind and you think it's okay, that Quran was an amazing book. I, I hate to say, but uh, I have my whole view of, of, of Muslims is not what you see on the news. Everyone I've met is more American than any people I've grew up with them. And they say that's the same God. They have different names. For I don't know all about that, but all the religions I just have, I have respect for anyone in any religion since I tried them all. You know, I did a few, Three, four years in prison. I got to go. I didn't just go once. I tried all the eighteen different types. You know, yeah. everything from Southern Baptist to Methodist to you know to uh, Presbyterian. I, I and I was raised Catholic, so I'm already screwed up there with rape being raised Catholic. But they all have one kind of common message and bond, and I, I think they're all good. Some hate the others, and I don't know why. When they all get to the up there in the sky and they got to be judged, I don't know. They're all gonna line up and. Presbyterians over there, Methodists over there. Oh, what do we got? A Jewish? Oh, you're way in the back. I don't know how it works, but they all have that you know, one thing in their heart, and they they just you know it, it's it's wanting so good, wanting to know the truth, yeah. wanting I to. I don't. I don't. Do one God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I tried them all, and I want them all. That's it. I want them all. You know. <laughs> well, that's the thing about it is that it's not religion can't save us. You know, really, we could sit there and and do contra. What do you call it? You know. Uh, conflicts and controversy all the time and just sit there and, and argue with people and divide and all that. But the thing is, there's a one God, you know, and, and we can, we need to lay down all that theology stuff and just get together and say, you know what, this is, this is what we need to do. We need to fight for our life, fight for, you know, to fight for the truth and believe the truth, not fight for it, but strive for it. And, you know, and there's only one God. There's only one God and he's the true and living God. 
He's everywhere. He wants the best for us. I think a lot of times people think, well, how could a how could a loving God, you know, uh, let all this stuff happen and all that? But the, we don't realize that God gave us a choice, you know. I look at it like this: say you have the power to create little nanite medical uh, metallic uh, like little creatures, and they kind of look like cockroaches, and they learn how to to breed and make more and more. Next thing you know, you got a million cockroaches, but two of them are having a fight, and this guy, you can't. Because you would become a god, how do you keep track? I hate to use cockroaches, but if you imagine that, like you know, this these life forms, we can make androids and robots and all this stuff. Now we're almost we could be gods. If I went back in time, just even a hundred years ago, or maybe 150 years ago, I have this lighter, I'm a god until the fluid runs out. Okay, you know what I mean? No, <laughs> just kidding. Because <laughs> you know, I have this superpower, right? Uh, so imagine. So are you saying like using the How can keep track of every little look? He gave us life, he gave us freedom to choose what we want to do and stuff. So those cho choices that you made, uh, if he sat there and controlled us all like a chessboard, who wants to live like that? He doesn't want to live, us to live like that. So when somebody dies and get hit by a car and you blame God and all that, you might want to look and uh, how would you handle it if you were God? That's yeah. that's you know what I mean. So yeah, when I, see I pray to God, when I pray to God, I say, God, look, everybody asks you for something. How about just just cry my shoulder. Tell me what's going on. I don't want nothing. Just lay it on me. Talk to me. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna judge you because you do that. But I just say, you know, tell me your problems. You know, yeah. That's what I do. I don't that, that's, and that's really what all that God wants is God. All that God wants is for us to talk to Him, and for us to, you know, hear what He's got to say by reading. You know, and just talk to Him. He just wants a relationship with us. That's it. That's the yeah. whole point. That's the whole point of it all. And uh, if we just choose him, that's all. He, it's for his own, for our own good, you know. Yeah. Go Jesus comes him. around. Hey, I got a couple of bottles of water. Let's turn them into wine. Let's come on. Let's talk. No, I just, you know, he's, he's famous for that, right? Well, uh, water into wine. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the one miracle. Everybody wants that power, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's, you know, he's a loving God. I, I, I know, I know. He is. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm not here to, you know, debate. I know. We're, I don't. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I had to go through a Christian uh, uh, residential drug program for a year while I was on pretrial, and then I stayed on the sober loop. But they have uh, Bible studies, and they said, Sean, you no longer can come. They're Bible studies, not Bible debates. And so <laughs> I, I, I got banned. <laughs> so, hey, it is what it is, man. There's no I, just, fear. I, I have a million questions, and if you can't ask one, I said, What? I have a million questions. So, <laughs> How are we going to find yeah. the answer if we don't ask questions? So I know okay. some some certain uh, sex 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 sections of religions are are taught that ours is not to ask why we shouldn't question God and oh God, well, you know, and you tell an addict that now I got a million questions. You know, man, I'm gonna make. <laughs> you know what? I do have an inner peace. I have a higher power. I I just my 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 thought of god is the heavens and the earth is way beyond just one planet so you know that's just that's Everyone the nature of me that's the nature of me so but you know what a god is in my life today that's what i can tell you right? and that's just the point that god gave everybody our will he says you know what you know your will to choose your will to believe what you want to and 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 how and to seek, seek him as you want to and so my prayer is that everybody will i know that he can change lives that's for sure and that's what I, I can blame, say. Yeah, you know? I, I blame my thoughts on uh, being raised Catholic. <laughs> well, not, everybody's raised just like, be raised like a heathen and still come to God. So <laughs> look yeah. at me. We have a thing called uh, recovering Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they believe in God and, and Jesus. So it's all good with me. But anyway, I mean, trying I'm to, not trying, to, trying to find a Catholic person to have that, that owned a Bible. <laughs> but yeah I, I, I like what you're doing here on this show sean it's really cool um yeah i try to have a sense of humor but yeah you know what the, the thing yeah. is i wake up in the morning i probably i, I must have at least 500 phone calls maybe a thousand in the i've been doing this two three years on this channel but now i got the wings for life job and for a year there we were using our own cell phone numbers for the office number Mm -hmm. I don't, have not ever had a day where nobody calls me asking for help. And don't they know who they're talking to? I'm a guy. I mean, you don't really want help from me, the weasel. And every day I get those calls. 
I now I get a reason to live. It just it's amazing. So that's why it's probably the, the CPSW plus money get a raise when I, when I pass that test next week. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but I mean that, that's a big deal to me, man. A certified peer support worker backed by the state of New Mexico. I mean, uh, my probation officer told me I'm off probation now, but she said when you pass that, we'll hire you for sixty thousand dollars a year to start. Wow. And I said, I'm working with you, and what what will I do? Well, when they come out of prison, we're gonna send them over to your office. Oh, I'll be labeled a snitch. That's not gonna happen. But I'm <laughs> I'm honored that they could, you know, my probation officer offered me sixty thousand dollars a year. Wow, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right, that's really good. But not only that, the the difference that you're making in the world, and so it's awesome, you know. Those oh, yeah, I'd rather do it not my way, but it's it's not my way when I help people. It, this isn't me, guys. When all these people here, they they all know we've talked on the phone. All the uh, che uh Chicho, though, I don't think we've talked yet. But man, you got to give me a call. I mean, call me after the show. It doesn't matter, man. I don't keep hours. You know, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? And my I, my number's on the bottom of all the videos. And if you need it, put a, a message on there. I'll put it on the screen. It's on every video. I don't hide. I got no more secrets. Yeah. I got none to hide. How about you, Rose? Do you keep secrets from anyone? Because I asked you earlier, you, you said uh, you can use my last name. I said, what do you want? Anything you don't want me to talk about? I have no <laughs> secrets. I have no secrets. It is what it is. So you're free. That's a freedom that you just, that's a freedom, isn't it? I know. <laughs> it's I've been on the cops for years, but then now it's like everything's changed around. For At first, when I first got clean, it was like so weird because where well, I used to always run from the cops, I mean, always had stuff that I hide in. Now it's not, you know, it is, that's the past. Now I'm able to free. I'm actually living free from all that. It feels pretty good to be legal and not to have warrants and all that. And I know. Pull me over. Yeah. I got time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. being able to function right, it's awesome. I so. know. It's so nice. But, you know, you got to be careful because, you know, I get clients and they want to ride here and there. And I got, I got to stop and tell them. Well, before I let you in my car or the company car, we have a van now. If you have anything on you, I don't care if it's a pipe from two months ago that you, you scraped clean. You can't have that on you. Um, I'm a felon. I got a rap sheet. I don't care if I'm off probation. You know, I give, and they go, well, I got this. I get that. Well, you, I can't give you a ride. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't want to take that chance. I, I've been in jail 11 times, always for some kind of, uh, you know, traffic. It, it involved me being in a car, getting pulled over, some kind of traffic stop, and right. I just I don't I don't live like that. And today I can stand up for myself. And I, I anybody I don't care if there's somebody I there's about a dozen guys I did time with in, that live here in Albuquerque, but I still most of them I don't have to ask. But you know, once in a while I'll see, you don't have nothing, right? Because uh, if I would have done that all my life, I would have never been to prison. But I've never been able to be a I, I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't have been a peer support worker. So it all happens for a reason. Setting you know, boundaries is like, yeah, one of the greatest things you can learn how to do. Boundaries, right? yeah. Setting boundaries for sure. Um, so these these people in the room in your chat room, they're all on pretrial. I think most of these are. And uh, four years for me, Katie's going on a year and a half. They, they all thought, oh, it'll be two months. I'll, I'll get a. No, they drag it on, and now they're doing it here in New Mexico with the no cash bail. You know, hear about a guy. There was a guy. He stabbed his girlfriend or something. They still let him out, and he said on the phone, and he called her, "If I get out, I'm going to kill you." And he got out, and he killed her. And they're still letting people like that out. So imagine that on a big federal, on a big nationwide federal scale. And here they are in the room. So I know what they're going. One day you go to prison. You don't know when it's going to be. It's, it's it's really tough, Rose. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. I can only imagine. I know my. You know, like I said about my son and everything, it's been tough. Yeah, how, he was on pretrial, I guess. For he was out on pretrial. Some people are locked up the whole time. No, he, he right now he's been locked up the whole time so far. He hasn't. So he has a violent charge, probably right, or something yeah, like he it's robbed a bank. Fresh, couple of years fresh still. So, so that's harder to fight it. So he's locked up right now as we speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't. I, I wasn't aware. Uh, so I, I still want him to call me. I'll, I'll take the call. Um, yeah, he's not he's federal though. You said or state, state right now. But he would, yeah, Ooh, right now. What does that mean? The feds are picking it up. He's has so he has a bunch of stuff. I don't know if I should talk about his stuff right now. That's up, that's up to you if you <laughs> want to. But but you know, I got people in this room that were here two three years ago. Did their time. They're already out. There's a couple ladies that started their own prison channels. I helped them. They wanted. They started them before they went in. Now they've done their year, two years, whatever. They're out. 
they got they got channels. I have some videos where there's 10 channels all in one room. I started okay, reaching I out to all the other guys. So we I, I got a whole force of people that could help your son or anyone like your son. Um, just people have been through, you know, I, I guess you could instead of peer support workers, uh, people who have done time support workers who don't get a paycheck but still want to help and have right. a YouTube channel, if that makes any sense. Wow, that's awesome that people do that. Like the, yeah, there's a bunch of us out there. There's a bunch of us out there. Yeah. We have a little chat. We have a little uh, message board on Facebook. It's it's United YouTubers, uh, uh, federal and state United YouTube. It's something like that. But we have our little. We have our. Uh, we have a place we hang out. A message board. We have a. Uh, right sometimes on. we have get together. We have get togethers at people's houses if we live close enough. But we're all over the country. Yeah. So I have at least 10 people with through the through Heaven's Door Ministry. I have about 10 people that we're connecting with that are they're that doing time about to get out. I got somebody in a couple. Wow, of really? Yeah. So, so definitely you get them connected with you. Oh, I, oh I, I would love that. And I, yeah, I will write them back. Uh, do they have emails in the state? I don't know. But either way, I'll write them back or call them back. Or I'll e email them back. OK. Yeah. And, and when they get out. With Wings for Life, you know, I can get them housing and jobs. That's what I'm, that's, they gave me that position because I wanted it. That's our new thing this year. So you need food, shelter, and clothing when you get out of jail or prison, I believe, you know, and a job. So right on, right on. If you know what, what, what about you? What about you? What is your, tell, tell, tell me about your, orga, your, or, your organization, uh, the, your organization. Which, uh, the one that I work for during, during the week or, yeah. yeah I know you have different, so, you have different so ones. That kind yeah. of, I guess one with a paycheck, is that the main one? But the one with the paycheck, and then tell me about the other ones too. Okay, so Christian Counseling Professionals is, um, we built to Medicaid and we have we have um, counseling where you meet with the counselor at least once a week or one, at least once a month actually. And if you're doing that, then you get the community support program, which of course is an assigned CSW, working through a treatment plan that, that renews every three months. You get to um, all those things, you know, from step one, kind of like what you're doing with the guys when they get out of jail and all that with wings. It's um, with us. It's, it can be from any situation, but getting your ID, getting housed, getting a jobs and all mm -hmm. that. So we have that program. Then we also have IOP, which, of course, is intensive outpatient program. Outpatient, yeah. We have intensive, recovery. Intensive. So when you see intensive, is, is there an op? Is there a like intensive as opposed to not intensive? Is there another one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we, the IOP is um, three days a week and it's three hours a day. And it's of course, drug testing. Um, and then the other ones is like recovery groups. So just basically. So, so when I got out on, on probation, federal don't have parole anymore, but I got tested two, three times a week. So what difference from that pr probation officer testing me as opposed to you testing? Now I know the answer, but I want, I want to hear you say it. So the IOP, um, the IOP with is for us is basically when you you want your family members and stuff, and it's just for for your own records. It's not we don't really connect with the PO officers unless somebody puts in an ROI and they want our, us to talk. But the probation officers are already testing all the time, right? Yeah, right, right. So yeah, I, I get, I'm not saying that you are you, we're gonna sit you out and come to our pro. No, I meant. Why would I want to do your program? I'm already getting tested three times a week from my PO. Yeah, I know why. I would want it because POs don't care. You care. That's my answer. But I yeah, hear you. yeah, and it's so. So we make like a personal thing, and we make it really a one on. Not it's not one on one. It's a group. The IOP is a group, but at the same time, we do this is because we really want to help you. So with the with the probation office officer, it's more like. I'm going to get busted. I'm going to get in trouble. You're doing it so you stay out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you do it with the IOP program that we have, it's more of a personal goals and stuff. And you're like, okay, I really am going to try to do it this week, you know, and be sober. So you're doing this for yourself and you're doing it for your family members. You know, a lot of times you get out and they're, they don't believe you that you're clean or stuff like that. So it's something for yourself, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, I've been, I think 11 residential treatment programs, not to mention the type the IOP, you know, after like the second or third one. Uh, yeah. You know what? Sure. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You, 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 you. But this time for sure. I mean, I, I, oh, oh yeah. addicts, right. uh, second chance? No. <laughs> 20 chances. Yes. Second chance. That's, that's worth, that's worthless. I mean, I've never met anyone who went to an AA meeting and instantly stayed sober and clean for the rest of their life. Have you? 
No, no. It's there you a, go. It's a thing. I never went to I never went to a recovery program um with mine because God was my recovery program. <laughs> yeah, and they have they have that whole Christian but it has to come from inside. Christian. 12 step uh, program now to uh, celebrate recovery, that kind of thing. Celebrate recovery, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have that. So there are some um, ones out there to go. But, um, you know, you've got to come from within you. You know, if you really want, you want to get things right, I mean, you can sit there and be stopped, you know, not quit, but get, be stopped by the system or whatever all the time. You could be, you know, you know, put a put a ball and chain, ankle bracelet, all this, all this stuff on, you know. But if if you don't want it from within you, it ain't gonna happen. You, know? you can lock me up for twenty years, man. Keep me shackled the whole time. Yeah. On that twentieth, on that twenty, after the twenty years are gone, <laughs> that first day of freedom. Oh man, I got some making up to do, and I, I'll be waiting for it. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. I got time. I'm locked up. Yeah. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That's yeah. not really. That's not. That's not recovery. That's just waiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Angrily. <laughs> yeah, and I guess that's whether the IOP is different because you you go home. And then you, you know, you're still dealing with the with the world. You're still dealing with everything. And then you go back. You go three Katie years in IOP too. Yeah. Uh, okay, Katie, would you like to me to introduce you to Rose? Because I talk to Katie on the phone a lot. Rose, I, I, Katie, please don't tell these people what I know her charges. But Katie, you haven't. I don't know if you know any women to talk to. I know you have uh, your own therapist. But anyways, Rose, you might be able to help Katie, especially when you told me that little story about when you got off the Greyhound bus. Katie, you, th you hear what I'm getting? Let me know, Katie. Call me, text me. Rose, would you talk to her if she uh, would like you to? Of course. Absolutely. I'm willing to talk to anybody. So. Okay. Katie, she might. Katie, uh, you need all the help you get out there, but Rose is a good woman. Okay, Katie? Um, you know, the more people you got on your side, you know what yeah. I'm talking about. I can't say too much because... I don't want to give her business away, but she's got a very, um, I don't know, historic case. I'll call it historic. Right on. That's cool. Well, okay. I really so, thank uh, you for, for letting me I did, be here. I'm sorry if I talk too much. I was going to catch up on these reader on these uh, people. Yeah. How about, it sounds like you want to end it, and that's great. How about a word for the people out there, words of wisdom, final words, message to God, to Jesus. Okay, to, you do that, you know I'm going to give you scripture and a prayer. <laughs> I know, I know, I, I know. <laughs> My which, favorite. Which, which yeah. Bible, which Bible are you uh, um, quoting from? There's four, <laughs> there's four versions now that I know that are mainstream. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so here, here's where, here's where the bottom line with what really changed my life was really to crying out to him and reaching out for God with all that I had. And my favorite verse in the Bible was as a deer pants for the water brooks. So my soul pants for you, oh God. So basically what it's saying is like a deer is running through the forest, looking for that drink of water. That's the way my soul pants for God. And so when my, when I started to do that and really, really want that for my life and I wanted nothing else but to get everything right. And it just happened. And it was the easiest thing. And the, the Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's what he meant by that is when you're really ready to surrender to him, it's easy. And he's, you know, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I will never turn back anything and any part of, 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 of what I've done with God. I will never give it back. I will never trade it. It's nothing. There's nothing in this world that compares to, to what God, the peace that God is giving me within me and the joy and, and, and nothing else is better. And I want to I want to tell you that if no matter who you are, if there's anybody listening out there, if God is, you know, been knocking on your door, give him a try. Give him a chance, because and, and however, however, however you reach out, reach out to him, um, start start looking for him. Start. He, he will he will help you, you know, and um, he's your creator and he wants to wants to be. He doesn't want you living a bad life or anything the rest of your life or living in hell on earth or nothing like that, you know, and he wants to save you not only for now, but for eternity. So I'll be praying for all of you. And uh, thank you for this opportunity for sharing my story. Thank you, Rose. And, and Rose, I know Rose didn't get really deep to where she came from guys. She's a walking miracle. Rose, I mean, imagine how old, were, how old, old were you when you got off that Greyhound bus? Just that's all. That's the last question I'll ask you. So I was, um, I was 47. 
So that's kind of maybe you've given up by then to take a Greyhound bus to a town you've never been in. Look at you today. I thought I was going to die. I thought that was the end of my life. I really did. Like I said, I was hearing voices in my head, and I was I was just uh, really, really paranoid. And, I mean, the times that I went to jail so many times, and each time it just got worse and worse, and some of the things that I did was really crazy. I mean, You better, it, you better hold on to Jesus because without him, girl – you need him and he needs yeah. you so thank god that you you found that way i mean yeah the mental illness you, that i had it was a death that was a death trip you took it to albert yeah i think he came here to die right i thought that, the, I, thought that I was yeah i didn't i had no i mean i cannot believe that god really did do it he really did change my life around because i would still be on the streets i would still be homeless i mean i was what Real quick, I mean, I don't get, didn't want to get back into it that much, but I want to tell you yeah, something. I, I told you one more question. I'm sorry, I lied. I know. <laughs> I <laughs> so, knew I was going to lie. That, but what it was is one time I was, I was, um, uh, when I was in El Paso, what really had got to me one time was that I was, I used to collect rocks and I was looking for rocks because they had energy in it and stuff. And I was picking my shirt up like this, putting the rocks in my shirt, walking around. And I didn't realize is that, is that uh, people, the cops started forming around me and people, neighbors started coming out and stuff. And and they, I didn't know until I got downtown that what they thought that is that I was going to hurt somebody with those rocks. Mm. They took me downtown. And then, and then I didn't even realize that I didn't have my pants on that whole time. I was out there without my pants on, collecting those rocks like that. And I, and when I realized that by the time I got downtown and realized that that's what was happening, it blew my mind. I was like, man, my mind is gone. I can't believe it. So I knew that I, I knew I needed to do something. That's when I started reaching out to God because I was going to die. You know, uh, that's just an example of how broken and how messed up that I've gotten. I, I, I am so grateful that you did. I would have never met you. These, the world would have never met you. And I know your work's just begun. You know this, right? It's just beginning. But I'm so thankful. Do you believe that? Do you believe it's just beginning? You've helped all pe people along this way, but it's yeah. just beginning. Yeah. God got a whole lot of plans for you, bro. <laughs> yeah, and I'm so excited. It feels good to be alive. <laughs> it feels good to be alive and be free, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I know you got to get going, and, you know, we all have lives because we found our way. You know, and you guys yeah. out there. You found this channel. Not that I'm the answer. Not that there's other channels, but you're looking for a different road to walk on. And you know, thank you for watching. And uh, you, you, Katie knows. And a few of these, can you, you call me anytime, guys. You call me at three in the morning. I might not answer, but Rose uh, said, "Katie, call me. I'll give you Rose's number." We all, everybody I've ever had on the show. I, there's one thing about them that they will let any of you people call them. One thing that they all have in common. I've probably had at least a hundred guests now. I, I will say every single one will let somebody call without charging you a bill. Okay. Right. <laughs> sure. Not not for money. You right. Know, I do this so I can you gotta give me a reason to live tomorrow, guys. When are you gotta call me or I'm gonna kill myself? It it cuts it comes down to that sometimes. You know? We gotta pay I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got I a hundred years I'll never pay for. It. <laughs> <laughs> I was the weasel. Now, now you know nobody. You know they nobody called me. You know. I know. I got to tell you something real quick, Sean. You know when we yeah. were in that in that in that uh, group class that we were on. Yeah, yeah. You, talk about you so were funny. the you were the person that shined bright on that thing. I was like, this guy's got life. He's got such great sense of humor. And you know, I just liked your positive <laughs> mentality, your attitude. You're oh, like. Thanks, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Cause the art instructor was uh, the instructor. Was, she said it was her first time. I I, I don't think she liked me. You know, I, I don't know if she was. Uh, I don't know because I'm a white boy. I don't know what it was. But I was. I know. But later on, she started to let me. Because at first she'd go, "Thank you for your question." But later on, it was, "Wow, thank you for that question." It was, she started to like open up a little. So there was hope for her. But I, yeah, I felt like uh, no. I was. She you know, was all about like, business. I think she was all about business at first, and then you you gave finally gave her all the jokes and stuff and laughter and she yeah, loosened yeah, up yeah. a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lighten up, Julia. <laughs> I know I get it. I get it like that. Yeah. Um, see, you know, when you do math, your your uh, your uh, your whole spinal system, your circulatory 
your uh, recipe. Anyways, it's, and I'm Italian, half Italian. So, you know, people Are think. You? Cool. Yeah, so they think this guy's spun. No, you should see me when I'm spun. You better, you better, you better like, move out of town. You know. Well, you're like, you should have seen me when I used to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just talk with my hands and, you know, I get, a little, I get excited when it's something uh, to get excited about, like helping these people on this chat room here. The first time I ever did a YouTube video, somebody, somebody's watching me. Oh, my God. Right. And they called me and they wanted advice. Really? I've had three or four cops call me for advice center facing charges. I go, wait a minute. Uh, 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 you're a police officer, like a, a regular police officer. You drive a car, you pull people over, you throw them in jail. You're calling me a felon and you want my advice. I've had to say this like four times. And we both laugh. And, I, you know, mm -hmm. I, and I, I don't, you know, I, I I didn't help them. You know, I've helped a few of them. Yes, guy, I have I have helped policemen that, like, hurt other people. Sorry, but, you know, I'm not God. He forgives. I He judges. I don't do that. I know. It was so weird. Yesterday I had a sergeant call me up and say, Hey, I heard that you guys can help some people that, you know, and at first when I looked at the phone, I was like, it's a police department. And I'm like, what's that calling me for? <laughs> they're not calling because they're outside. You yeah. know? And I was like, I'm not used to getting calls from the sergeants, you know? And then he's like, uh, it's been a long time anyway, <laughs> you know, for wrong stuff. They need our consultants. They need that. Hey, we don't know how they think. You know how they think. And that's, yeah. that's why they call us. Oh, well, uh, they have personal reasons too for their own advice. Yeah, they, no, he needed help. He needed. He, there were some people that needed some resources. So I was like, "Oh yeah, of course. That's what I do now. That's right. <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do." And the state, yeah. like, like California has it. Florida, I think New York has it. Florida doesn't have it. I don't think. But there's a. I mean, you know, as as many states have made marijuana legal, so have as many states have it, their version of a certified peer support worker. Did you know that? Oh yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah. It's not just New Mexico. I'm sorry. They're like never. 38 or something they finally added on but california's had it for a while but it's a tough one it's a whole year course out there yeah, so. oh wow yeah so we got to get ready for that exam huh yeah, yeah maybe we can you know the, 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 the lady was teaching us today maybe we could all meet at a coffee shop um there's a place that does uh it's a recovery place it's called uh i'm going to give them a free advertisement it's called the the Ancora cafe and they have karaoke on wednesday night and all kinds of stuff going, and it's all clean sober. Not a, no, it's oh, a really? That's cool. And, uh, it's uh, yeah. And so maybe we could all uh, meet meet up there and uh, sing a song, and do some studying. And they yeah, got, for sure. Their, their that. menu has quesadillas, waffles, baked goods, breakfast burritos, grilled sandwiches. They got all kinds of coffees, espressos, everything you think of. And it's on uh, one forty eight Quincy Street. Uh, I don't know, no sure that where that is. Oh, it's uh, God. doesn't say southeast or nothing. But anyways, um. Uh, I'll take a picture and send it to you on your phone. Yeah, send it to me. Let's do it. And they've been around a couple of years, apparently. And uh, the people, it's a recovery program that uh, I guess somebody graduated out of the recovery program 10 years ago, opened up a coffee shop cafe, was in touch with everybody around him, and they're still like a group, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. So that's the best way you can describe it. And uh, and so anyways, yeah, I'll send you this. And maybe we could, uh, we could do some stuff, you know? How does she say flashcards and... Uh, just a study group. I mean, I, I want to get, I want to pass this test, you know? Um, yeah, for sure. That was like a free advertisement for them, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, guys, it's called the uh, the Anchor, the an Anchor, or Anchor, like an anchor. You know, you know, anchor, Anchor, or oh, Anchor. Okay. Anchor or Anchor, Anchor Cafe. Anchor. I'll do, a, I'll do a real commercial. I'll do a, a YouTube short for these guys. Um, I haven't met them, but my coworkers have, and they said they're great people, so... Whatever my coworkers say, because half the people I work with, we all did time at the same prison, and I, I got them, I got them all their job there. So <laughs> I oh, get yeah. to go to work with all the people I did time with. Man, could you imagine that? How lucky that is to go every day. Yeah. Five of us, five of us, we're all friends at the same prison, and then we all work together. Yeah. Wow, oh, that's pretty cool. That is awesome. I love awesome. the. So my ministry that I have, the Heaven's Door Ministry, that meets over at Highland Church, we meet on Saturday nights at five, right? We have okay. a group of people that come together and we are like just we had went through recovery together. Now we're, you know, everybody just. Yeah. yeah so it's pretty cool to I want to invite people out to that, too, if they're looking for like spiritual wellness. Oh, stuff. yeah. I might want to check that out myself, you know. So if you yeah. want to get a give a plug for that. Um, this is all over the whole country. But some of you people are in New Mexico that watch me. Some of the people um, are in Albuquerque. Cool. 
Free commercial. There you go. 30 seconds. Two. Yeah. One, two, three, go. 417 Paloma, Southeast Albuquerque. <laughs> Uh, Highland Baptist Church, we're Heaven's Door Ministry, and we meet Saturday nights at five. Come see us. <laughs> so, if I tell I say knock, knock, knocking on heaven, Heaven's door. door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a mo Christian movie called Lifted. I just watched it the other night because it, we all saw it in prison. It's called Lifted. And uh, have you heard of that movie yet? No, it, it, I haven't. It's one, of, it's one of those pure flicks, uh, the Christian uh, sure. Lifted guy. Okay? Lift it. I'll it. check All it out. It. You will cry. You will cheer. You will cry some more, and then you will just cry happy tears at the end. I think there's a Jesus movement going on. You know that I've seen so many pictures of, and my my son was telling me that too. People be in prison and they're like worshiping God, like all these you know men just like. Oh yeah, you know, men, and men, we are now allowed to cry and hug each other as we cry in prison. Only for certain things, like somebody in your family dying. Somebody takes your honey bun, you cry, you're still getting shanked. But we have made some progress. <laughs> yeah, this world's, I think this world's doing it because they have to. I mean, gosh, it's yeah. getting crazy out there. So right, right, that's right, going right. to rise up too. That's so. amazing. Rose, keep, 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 keep on keeping in touch with me. And uh, anything I can do for you, um, you know, just to say the word, you know, if it's within my powers to be i will i will do it for you so thank you sean and, and, and uh, if i have some clients that need some help on, on your uh over there with leroy and that i definitely already have some in mind that do need your help but i got to convince them that they need your help yeah <laughs> you know, that's, sure. that's the other thing yeah i'm here for you too definitely anybody that needs help you know and uh right. anything that i can do i will and uh mm -hmm. and and i know I will definitely be sending you some people and how encouraging people to watch this. So it's, it's really neat. It's real. I love it. So I try, you know, I, I don't fake nothing guys. So, you know, um, this is life after prison, man. You know? Yeah. I mean, you came from, you, you really are leaps and bounds where you got today, Rose. I mean, yeah, I, I barely know you and I'm so proud of you. I could cry when I say that, you know, and I every day, blows my mind every day to see what God has done in my life. It's my life's completely changed. It's wild, but it's cool. We got to stick together, right? We stick together, yeah. grow together, hope together and make it together. Right. Yeah. If you ever go to prison, guys, you get one superpower while you're in there to bring to the outside. You know what it is? What? I can, I can read people. And I know if you're full of BS or if I know if your heart is real because we're, we're, we, we can't sleep until, Anybody walk that's that's how you survive in prison. So you right. develop a skill, an instinct, a, a gut feeling. And I know I just I can within two minutes, spidey sense, I mean way beyond that. I, we get that one superpower and rose. My superpower tells me you're a genuine woman who's totally turned her life around and does care about other people. And uh, you should have died eight years and two months ago on a Thursday, but you're with us because you turned it around. You found you found you found Jesus, you found God, whatever it is you found, you already had it within you. Yeah. Thank you. For, right. Thank you for finding it though. Okay. Thank that, you. That's my little message. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm so thankful for that. There's a song by Rascal Flats called The Stand or called Stand or The Stand. Ah, I know that. Yeah. Take it says, take everything that you're made out of. One day you're gonna take everything that you're made out of and you're gonna stand. And that's you, you found you found you found the right door. You found your path. You found your way. Whatever it was, it rained, so it made you go left. Whatever happened, happened, and thank God you found it. You know, thank God, yep, for sure. And, and when you found it, you didn't you didn't like turn away. You found it and said, "Yeah, that's what I've been looking for." So. Yep, <laughs> never letting that go. Now, oh, wait, <laughs> I'm getting all philosophical, but <laughs> that's not a word yeah. philosophical, but it is now. Some people probably called in and said, what? Or checked in and said, is this the right channel? <laughs> hey, see, we get out of prison, man. And, you know, ooh, I mean, you never know. You never know. Or I can go down to the corner and hang out with the mother thugs and stuff. Hey, what's going on? Talk like this. You know, hey, let me get 50 cents for that soda. You want me to? That's how it used to be, guys. Really. I know you look at me now. You can't tell. How are you? Do you remember how you were? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Did you have a talk? I, I couldn't even. Oh, yeah. Wait, did, can I you was, do an impression of yourself back uh, then? Well, no, I can't. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> it's, 
I, I like to make fun of my old self. It helps, it helps me. It helps me. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> So I was very so paranoid, man. I mean, I don't know which one do you, which version do you want? The paranoid one, the one that was. Do you have a dollar? No. <laughs> the <laughs> slutty one or the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which version? Oh, hey, you've been working out. You know the guy's five hundred pounds, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I oh the confused one, the mad one. I mean, I used to walk into Walmart and get so crazy in there, I couldn't know which way was up. I always get thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> See now we go in there. I did my. I called it the Sanford and Son, right? I'm yeah. coming to Elizabeth. Hard to make my one call, and they're all looking at me, and they're all running out the door. <laughs> <laughs> but I was good. I was a decoy. A decoy. <laughs> Sam, I'm coming to Elizabeth, you know. And they're, so I'm having. I'm faking a heart attack. If you guys don't know Sanford and Son, well, they right? go in there and do their. Yeah. Always having a heart attack. He's talking to his dead wife. I did that by <laughs> day clean the store out yeah that's why it was a weasel you know <laughs> oh okay i could do a good well i could do a good distraction there to people <laughs> that's funny you know every time we go to walmart's now you know like if i ever i i tip the the uh the checkers what, what? what i i tip them 10 percent every time they what what you don't want to know but please take this it's your money keep it I, we're not a, I, just, I tip them i owe them <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah, they, they they don't know what's going on. They're like, "What?" I can't. I, I'm, I'm not going to tell them either because you know I don't want to go back. <laughs> I don't want to go back. <laughs> Just like take the money, shut up, and take them, take that tip. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, I do both. Don't go to Walmart with me. How much is that one hundred thirty-one and ninety-four cents? I had to have what? How much? Here, just here's the jerk 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I stole a lot of money from Walmart. So, faking my heart attacks, I could say the Charles Mantle. I never killed anyone in my life. No, I just laid there pretending to have a heart attack. Why they stole two thousand? You really would do that? Wow, that's wild. Yeah, <laughs> I fake the heart is pretty good at it too. I'm a one call. Oh, you know, so man. And then all mir miraculously, I walked and ran out of the store. When they some they, there's a time when they all kind of get up and see if you know you run out. Yeah. <laughs> right before the ambulance gets there, it just they almost like have they're almost like lining up to let you run out. It's it's really wow. strange. Wow. Oh, the tricks of the trade, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't want to ever do that kind of stuff again. Talk about how we're hard you work like make cooking and you know making it's hard work man. yeah yeah and, and you don't get no uh a, a grammy or emmy at the end of the year i mean no you know nobody you don't get any recognition you just lose everything yeah <laughs> right you end up losing everything anyway so <laughs> <laughs> i love katie in the comment section i'm checking her out she's funny oh uh, she's so oh uh, katie's coming she, she's gonna gotta wait to kind of get almost her her at least her, her plea deal going before she she's gonna come on the show. She has a lot to say to educate the world about what she's charged for. Because Katie, you will definitely woke up me. I mean, I had that one sided view, uh, and I never really argued about it. That's the way it is. You opened my eyes, Katie, and uh, you know and. Like you don't believe now, man. I want to fight for you, Katie. Um, because there's a humanist. Like we were talking about the human part of that human heart that we all have. And when you talk to Katie, or us, Katie, please call me and I'll give you Rose's number because I think she'll open your eyes to something too, Rose. I can't say what her charges are. She can, but I I, I won't do it. You know. Yeah. You yeah, have I, look, I look forward to talking to her for sure. Plus, when you're that life you lived out there, it's close to that. It's something, I mean, it's similar, but it's not. And you guys, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Call me in five days. Oh, Sean, I know exactly what you meant now, but you couldn't say it on the air. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's why I'm asking Katie to call Rose. Uh, she, I know Rose will have your back, Katie, and I know you'll have our back. And Katie, when they make that movie of the week about you, or I want I want to roll. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, all of us have our own story. And uh, I know that I know that uh, when when we go through that stuff, we go through it for a reason so we can connect with each other and get uphold each other and give each other hope. You know, 
we share we share our story that's the important thing yeah. each of us share our story on the real <laughs> i'm gonna be 60 in about six months guys so i should have been dead 20 years ago at the least 20 years ago at the latest so wow. that's that's a that's a that's some that's a god dude. that's beyond my uh, I'm not here on borrowed time, by the way. I'm here because God has a plan for me. That's right. It's not borrowed time. That's right. You think that that, that, that expression does not apply to me? <laughs> Have you heard that expression? You're here on borrowed time, bro? Yeah, for doesn't, sure. It doesn't apply to you either. You know, no, no. You're, you're here because you got a lot of work left to do. <laughs> I used to have on borrowed time, but now not anymore. <laughs> not, not anymore. And I hope I hope that, that you guys know what I'm talking about. I am not here on borrowed time. If you think I am, uh you can call me, but I think you should call a therapist or call God because you're not here on borrowed time either. If you if you've lived long enough to tell me I'm on borrowed time, somebody got a plan for you, man. That's all I can say. Because you're watching me, yeah, you gotta I can't tell you the plan because I'm not God. <laughs> But God does have a plan. He does have a plan. Yeah. And I don't want to get in my preaching. Because when I say God, it's bigger than all of you. <laughs> well, he created us. So As a, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, uh, God works all things together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So when we have a, when we have a purpose to help others and to do, to pay it forward, what he's doing, you know, and, it's awesome. And, uh, well, I, I think I'm I'm hungry. I worked all day and uh, all I I had a I had a turkey sandwich around eleven o'clock. What time is it now? So I, I need I need to get going too. Rose, I I know you were going to end twenty minutes ago. I'm sorry. To yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I enjoyed it though. Thank you for having me. You bet. And, and any of any of your friends want to come on here and you want to come with them or whatever you want to do another show or you want to start your own channel? I'll I'll give you everything my knowledge. Help you do that. So, anybody out there want to start a new YouTube channel? Because I there's five or six people that used to come on here with the prison. They have YouTube channels now. I had a little part in that, and I'd like to have a little part if you guys want to start one even before you go in. So you're awesome, Sean. You really are. Keep doing what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Like, subscribe, leave a comment if you want to see a video about something. I don't care if it's how to do a yo-yo, walk the dog trick, or whatever. Just put it in the comments and I'll try to make it happen. Rose, final, final words. <laughs> Thank you, you all. God bless you all. Be praying for you. Take care. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Give me my edgy way again. All right. Thank you. <laughs>